you have a tie to, to the place where you live. You appreciate that the sun shines and dries your bricks. There's this very romantic idea about being in this very small structure, very open to the elements. There's a sense of space here that's incredible. You can see for miles here. And there's so many different subtle changes within the landscape. It's very meditative. You either love it or you hate it. There's no two ways about it. This part of San Bernardino County basically was very sparsely populated. Nobody really settled this area until after World War I. There was a lot of returning veterans who had lung disorders. Physician James B. Lucky suggested to many of his patients that they seek a cure in the warm, dry air of the desert. And he thought that this area was pretty good, particularly 29 Palms, because there was an oasis here for a source of water. So many of the veterans did come out here actually seeking a cure. I've been working on a project on jackrabbit homesteading since about 2005. We're out here in Wonder Valley. It's one of the areas that has probably the most homesteads in the Mojave area. Wonder Valley is not actually a place in any kind of real designation, so it is more a state of mind. It began to gain some form in around the late 40s, 50s, 60s, when the Small Tract Homestead Act went into effect, and little homesteads began springing up throughout this area and a lot of areas of the Morongo Basin and all the way into Nevada and Arizona and the low desert. This was one of the last of the Homestead Acts that allowed people to get public land from the federal government if they were able to lease out a property, improve it up by building a small structure, and they could then dispose of it, sell it, give it to heirs. Here in Wonder Valley, the community of homesteads has stayed particularly intact because it's kind of the edge of civilization and nobody's felt particularly motivated or that there was sufficient profit to change it. So it's kind of stuck in time. Deserts were not the sort of place that people really, really wanted. It was obviously way, way, way too hot or way too cold. So for people to come and homestead out here was indeed rather odd. The interest in the Western heritage and the sort of very romanticized idea of the Western landscape. That was huge during the 40s and the 50s and even into the 60s. So this is a big part of our cultural heritage and I think that kind of a romantic idea about place and wanting to be part of that and wanting to project yourself into this particular kind of landscape was really attractive for a lot of people. There's something about them, they're located in this kind of hinterland. There's a certain kind of aesthetic out in the desert. It's this rustic bohemia that is prevalent throughout this area. This homestead cabin behind me is mine. I use it as my art studio and it's a really classic example of the kinds of homesteads that were built. And they would go up in the space of a day. They were practically like package homes. People came out here with a romantic idea of what this was going to be like. And some of those communities are still established today. But a lot of these properties were left to just slowly degrade into the desert and melt back into this really desolate landscape. The ones that stayed were obviously people that had some kind of respect for the land and the coyotes and the scorpions and all the other normal creatures of the desert and it has a beauty all of its own. There's always been a wonderful, unpredictable mix of folks here. Going all the way back to the original homesteaders who came out, they were very excited partly at the freedom of being able to create their dream and not have control over them. That and some sort of a relationship with this desert environment, even if it's nothing more than the freedom and the space and the opportunity to be however they want to be.